Hello, and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Today, I'd like to do a variation of a painting that I have already done in the past on one of my shows, which is a beautiful design that I'm holding here by Tom Presnell. And um, he's a wonderful designer out of South Carolina, um, a fantastic painter. His website, um, not his website, sorry, his Facebook page is Painting with Tom. So give him a look. And um, he has some really, really nice projects for you to see and maybe duplicate. And he'll be happy to help you also if you want to write to him. So I'd like to do um, a variation of this painting. I want to show you how easy it would be to take a painting and to change the colors, make it a totally different season. So we're not going to be doing any snow today, OK? We're just going to be painting the bird with a pretty background. And um, I'm using some fantastic deco art colored um, paints today. They have such a vivid color. And I won't be able to hold up my palette too, um, too high. Um, they're acrylic in a bottle, and they will um, drip a bit. And we'll uh, list those um, colors after I use them. I may not use all of these colors, OK? So I'm just going to get started here. I'm using a um, 14, I believe it's 14 by 18 um, canvas panel. And it does have a pretty wide tooth on it, OK? You can, I don't know if you can see it, but you might be able to hear a little. Uh, and what I did was I just put a sticker of a bird. You can see a little bit of outline. I cut it out um, from a sticker, a plain white page sticker. Um, like a sticker pad, and I place that on there. So uh, after we're done painting the background, then I'm going to peel off the bird, and I'm going to very simply paint that bird in. Again, we'll do a cardinal, because it has such pretty uh, colors, the reds. And uh, the black background, I like to make like a, um, a blue color. You know, I want to do, I'm not sure what blue color yet, but I do want to add a couple blues with some white and see what kind of a nice background we get. Now, in Tom's painting, he had a bit of a ground. I'm not even going to put the ground. We're going to have this bird just be right in the tree. So here we go with some really pretty blue. I'm using a, a Wilson Bickford brush, which mostly we use um, for oil, but it can be used for acrylic. We just have to wash it out really well and dry it. So I'm going into this really pretty color. This is more like a Caribbean blue. And I, I did wet the brush, OK? I didn't want this paint going on real thick. I want it to dry, um, you know, so we have some time in the show so I can go on and show you some more little tricks. And I'm just going to paint in some of that blue. I'm dipping in some white. Now, I happen to run out of the bottled white, so I'm actually using some, some gesso also from DecoArt. Uh, they have a great product line. I'm happy to be sponsored by them, and they give me some wonderful products to try. So you can see I'm just adding some blue and some white. When I get down to the bird, I don't want to paint this way down, because it may pick up that sticker. So I'm just going to be real careful and go around this little bird. And you can see I accidentally got some brown in there, which uh, I'm not sure where that came from. But you know what? That's OK. I want to have it a little lighter around the bird. So when, we, when I do paint it wet, um, sorry, when I do paint it red, it um, will really, really show up. OK? So I love to take a painting and do a, a different variation, just to give you an idea. And there's some more brown in my brush. I'm not going to spend the time to wash that out. I'm just going to use it and rub it right in there. So I might just be able to take a paper towel and wipe it, rather than get a whole lot of water on that brush. OK? So um, uh, let's get some of that out. I got some of that out of there. I'm going back into my blue again. Get some blue. And I have a couple other different blues. They may be a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to try a little bit and see. There we go. Yeah, it may be a little too dark. That's OK. I'm going to throw some of that in there, get a little variation. And you can see it's pretty wet. I don't want this paint real thick, but I do want to make sure I have a nice color on that canvas. And I do like that blue. So let me pick that up and just show you what I'm doing without trying not to pour it all over. I'm just taking a little bit of the end of the puddle of the blue and going in some of that white. So I'm just palette mixing. And this way we have another blue. What beautiful colors these are. And I may have to stand back as I see I have a couple spots I missed there. And peek back here, I have a little bit of reflection. And that's from uh, the wet paint and me putting the water in there. I have some lines in there, and that's OK, too. 
If you wanted to really make this smooth, you could, but I like the idea of having it look a little rough, and that's why I chose this um, wide texture canvas today, just to show you that you pretty much can paint on anything that you have. Um, one of my students, Deanna, um, loves to go to garage sales and she finds a lot of great buys and she brought these over to me and I said, oh, that's wonderful. Something for me to, to try and get a little bit of texture, okay? So I'm gonna continue to paint this blue and I may go to a, um, a, a bigger brush. I'm gonna see. If it starts to take me a little bit too long, then I will go to a bigger brush. So I wanna get some blue around this bird where I got that brown in there and don't want to peel him up. Now, the other thing that I have done in, in quite a few shows before is I um, traced out the bird and then I put a masking tape over it, a cool trick that uh, my mentor, Wilson Bickford, always does. And then you take an X-Acto knife and cut around it. So that's another way you can do it. I just happen to see this sticker and I say, you know what, I'm just gonna do the sticker this time. Now, when I have classes, sometimes I um, have the stickers already cut for my students. This way they don't have to fuss with the X-Acto knife. And um, I think it's a, another, another nice little, little trick, especially for, for new students. Now, when you're using an X-Acto knife, if you're using a wrapped canvas uh, rather than a, a panel, you have to be very careful because it's very easy to push that knife right through. So my advice, if you're a beginner, I would use these panels. And the panels, at least this way, will ensure that you can't go right through your canvas, okay? So I'll be done with this in just another minute. Um, in the meantime, I can tell you that I'm just going back and forth between these blues, really no rhyme or reason. I just wanna get pretty blue on this background, okay? So this kinda already is giving me kind of a, um, almost a Caribbean feel, uh, feel of it because of these colors and how they're blending together, okay? So I'll try to get a little more dark down here as we get closer to the bottom. Again, I'm taking a little bit of extra time to rub it in so it starts to dry fast so I can continue hopefully without stopping, okay? So you can hear me rubbing that in and you can also see the beautiful color. All right, almost done here. So again, while I'm painting, um, let me tell you my website so you can come and see what I have going on. I teach out of my home studio and you can come to my site at www.lucysworldofpainting.com. You can see what I have going on. And I also teach at a wonderful center um, in the same town here that we're filming in East Brunswick, New Jersey. And it's uh, called the Legacy Life Center. And it's wonderful because if you take a class and you have kids, you can bring them and they'll watch your kids for you. So take a pop on over and, and see what they have going too. Now, I'm almost out of the, um, the blue on my palette and I can see that I somehow got that brown again. So I'm going to get blue. This is a cobalt teal hue um, media fluid acrylics. Whoops, and I just poured a whole lot out of there. It came out a little bit thinner than I thought it would, but that is okay. We'll get some on there. Now you can see I laid that on a little bit thick that time so you can see the difference between when I do it thin and when I do it thick. So let me get that in there. So again, about Legacy Life Center, you can look them up in East Brunswick and you can come and maybe take a class with me over there. That would be great. They also offer um, karate and a whole bunch of other events for a whole family. It's a great family place. Okay, so that's, that side I put on that paint a little bit thick, and it may take a couple minutes longer to dry. We'll see how it goes. I'll be more careful on this side. And here we go, just about done with this now. And this will be our background, and I could throw a little more white in there if I wanted to do some clouds. And I think that looks pretty. I love the blue colors. If I wanted to, I can just use a dirty brush and I'm just tapping a little bit in some white and I can come in here and just kind of rub in a little, just to give a little bit of an illusion of some clouds, not, not paying more attention to the clouds. Um, if you like to have tutorials on clouds, I have quite a few videos, um, shows that I did 
some really pretty clouds. So you can see how you can just go on if you wanted to keep adding. For the sake of time, I'll just move right along. I want to get some branches in there. If we have some time, I may even put some, um, some leaves in, okay? So I'm just going around this bird, and that bird is going to show up really pretty. The red against the blue will be very, very nice. Okay, we'll see how it works. Okay, and now that the um, canvas is a little bit dry, I'm going to start putting on the branches. So I have a brown and I have a black. I may mix them together. I don't want it too, too dark. Um, as I did in the, um, the other painting with the snow, okay? Because I want the tree maybe to look a little more alive and not so, you know, uh, dead of winter, all right? So I'm going to use some brown and just maybe a tiny bit of black, okay? So let's see, here we go, this is a brown. I have a little bit of black and I am using a Wilson Bickford round brush. Again, you could use any of these as long as you wash them real well in soap and water, let them dry, you can go back to use them on your oil, all right? So I'm gonna put that back down again. And let me take out my little picture here, just so I can have a little peek. Now, first of all, this bird will be sitting on a branch, so the best way to approach it is to get your branch in that the bird will be sitting on. At least you know you have that in there. So I'm gonna just come up underneath. And you know what? I think that color is pretty good. And you can see it's dry underneath, so that's working. I'm just going to twist now and twist. I want a nice crooked branch. When you see this in here, that means you're, you don't have enough paint. Now, normally at home, I would use something that Deco Art um, makes. It's a um, blending medium, an extender. It makes the paint last a little longer, uh, stay wet a little longer. Um, but on the show, I'm not going to because I actually do want it to dry fast, okay? So I, that's something you may want to pick up. The extender is a wonderful product. All right, so here I go. And you can see I'm pushing and I'm twisting. I'm trying not to get my arm in the way. I'm twisting. I want this to branch to look more natural, all right? So I don't want it to be straight. Of course, if I wanted to make it straight, I could do straight with a straight brush, but we don't want to do that. We want to make the branch look pretty natural. So I'm just going back to my palette. When you see me putting my brush down, all I'm doing is mixing more of the brown paint little bit of black and I'll start putting in some more branches. So I'm gonna have this come off the side, which is pretty much what we did before, okay? And back again, more paint, little black, little brown, and I'm just gonna come in and start to paint this up the side. We want a nice little bigger um, trunk here to show that's maybe the main part of it, all right? And I could always come in later fix up some of those edges if I wanted to, and here is a little dry. So for the sake of time, I just wanna show you, we're gonna get these branches in. Of course, off a main branch, we wanna have some, some other branches. Now there I put it in a little bit too much black. I can go back with the brown, mix it again. And see, I'm wiggling, wiggling, I'm wiggling, and I'm turning. I'll have that one come right off the page. Now, still a little bit dry. So I will come back again, putting a little more paint, trying to get that edge. Now this, you can take a couple hours on. If you want to have it be perfect, you can, okay? Um, and when you're painting at home, that's great. Now I would advise you just to watch the whole video to see which way I'm going with the painting and then it'll be much easier for you um, to see you know, how, how I'm approaching this one. So I'm gonna come up. I'm just gonna put this in for placement like this. And you could see it's dry, but you could see how I wiggled and turned my hand. So I did that for placement. And then I will go back and more paint, because I know some of it, I'll go back this way. This way I know that I'm not blocking. You can see how I'm doing it. I find that to go out with the branch, the way you're going is more natural. However, just for the sake of the show, I will do it what I would say is backwards because I want to show you and I want to make sure my hand is not in front of it so you can get a good peek at what I'm doing. Now you see I'm pushing harder. I'm lifting the brush up, pushing harder again. Then I lift, and that's how we're getting all these little turns and all. So these would be the primary branches, okay? So that one, this now I think should be a little bigger. 
only because I made that so wide. So we want this to be more of a main branch. So that's something you can figure out as you're painting. You'll take a look, you'll stand back, and you'll say, oh, you know what? That branch maybe doesn't look exactly the way I want it to, and you go back and change it. So these are the primary branches that I'm putting in right now, okay? So they're thicker. All right, then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you this grip liner and we're gonna get some branches on that um, are thinner branches and we'll call those the secondary branches, okay? And that's what's really going to make this stand out, okay? We're gonna put some highlights on these branches because we don't want them quite this dark. So I can do my little branches first and then I can come back and Put some highlights. Now, when we do the highlight, unlike the other painting, we're not going to be using white because we don't want it to look like snow. All right. What we want to do is we want it to just like a look like a live tree, not you know, not necessarily a winter tree. Okay. So I'll put in a shorter one here. So we'll put some branches on uh, without snow. Of course, this way it kind of looks like another season. We don't have to say what season. We just want it to look like a different season. All right, so I'm just coming out. Again, I'm doing a lot of Y's. You might have heard me say that in other shows. The branches a lot of times come out like a Y, so I'm doing some Y's there. All right, and I can just keep going and going and going. For the sake of time, I'm only going to put a couple more. All right, you can see I'm dragging it and pushing and pulling. All right, and it's a little dry. I can come back in there. So I have some nice heavy branches in there now, and I think a little bit more right here coming up this way and I will go on to the script liner okay and this way when I'm doing a script liner I got a little heavy on some of that it'll uh, it'll start to tack up a little bit it doesn't have to be totally dry it just would be easier if it tacks up a little all right now I'm going to get a, a script liner and I have them on the bottom of my easel and I see one in the back there. There we go. It's my script liner. Now with the script liner, I taught this in other shows also, it always has to be wet. All right. Whether you're using oil or whether you're using acrylic. So in this case, I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to come to the end of the puddle of paint. I'll put a little black in there and with that brown and I'm rolling the brush, getting a nice edge and the paint will come down to it. So when I put on the secondary branches, I'll come up here so you can see, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm wiggling it, wiggling it, wiggling it in my hand. So wiggling and pulling, wiggling and pulling. I'm not pushing. If I push real hard, I'll get a real thick branch and I don't want some thick ones right now. I want some thin ones, okay? So that one I can see Looks like it needs to be attached a little better. You can come off of these, let some hang down. All right, so you can see it's starting to get dry. My brush got a little bit thick with paint, so I can dip it right in the water there, come back, wiggle it and pull it out and thin it out again. All right, now I might need a little more water. This has to be a little bit inky. So here we go, I'll try to hold it this way. I'm rolling it and your arm up and I'll start to get in some of these secondary branches, all right? And you can tell it starts to look better already once you get some of these secondary branches in. There we go, and I'm just having them come all different ways. Now, if I have time, I can go back and add more, all right? I wanna make sure I have time to show you that bird. So for now, we'll just put in some, but at least you see how we do that. See the dry edges? Oops, made a little boo-boo there, so watch this. I can just go right over it, fixed. All right, so you'll, you'll stand back. I'll try to stand back and see if there's a couple like empty spots maybe that I feel may need some. I can put one here kind of aiming at the bird. See, I did the Y again. It's another Y. We can have it come up, down, really any, any way. These trees, they're natural. Any way, you can't make a mistake. So I'm just having them kind of all come to the right. Now I ran out of water there, I got real dry. Again, coming back into my color, twisting and turning. There we go, okay? So, I think we'll stop there for that. Now, what I'd like to do is get some highlight on, on those uh, branches. Um, I could use my round brush again, I think I will. I'm gonna just rinse it off a little bit and let me find my paper towel under here. I will pack, I will pack it, <laughs> I'm saying pack it, I will pat it dry a little bit, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is I need to make a lighter color. 
to have a highlight. So these look more, you know, rough and natural. So I'll move a little brown over and I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna move some of this white in here. All right, and here we go. See that? I have like a, a brownish color, all right? What I can do now is I could just come along and just kind of wiggle the same fashion and I could dry brush and just get some other color on there. Now, if it looks a little too stark, then I can change it again, all right? Coming back in again, just kind of putting another color and you'll see how this will start to kind of pop off the page once I get some of this lighter color on, all right? Now again, you would take your time, you'll go um, through every branch maybe and get a little highlight. I may not have that much time, so I'll do a few more to show you. I'm using water, again, as my medium because I, I want it to dry pretty quick and a little more. You could see I'm just kind of making a lighter tone and I can come back in, put some lighter tone on there, again, wiggling back and forth and trying to hit quite a few of these branches. And I hope that it's light enough to um, show out. So it may not be. So I'll get even a little more of the white and add it with the brown. All right, I do want it to show on the camera. So this might be a little lighter than I would do, but no, I think it's okay. I wanna make sure that you can see just a contrast. I know sometimes it's a little hard to see, so I do a, I'll do a little bit of a starker uh, contrast here. Here we go. So that I think will show a little better. So you can see now that branch came to life a little bit. All right, so I'm going to wash this brush off and I think what we'll do now is we will peel off the bird, all right? Wash my brush again while I'm talking and let's see if I can get underneath here and this bird should come off pretty easily. All right, there we go. I have a little bit more here. So now you can see the bird. Came off nice and easy, not too much bled in there. The little bleeds in, that's okay. Once it's dry, it's no problem to fix it. Now, here we go. I'm gonna do a very, very simple bird, okay? So first, I'm just dipping my round brush, the tip of it, in some black. And just looking at Tom's little painting here, just so I can remember, uh, his bird actually has a little better shape to it, but just to show you, see? Now my brush doesn't have that round edge, so I'll go back to my palette, and I'm just gonna twist it around a little bit. There we go, that's a little bit better. All right, I hope you understand what I mean. I'm kind of making that a little pointier. And around his beak, there is some black. Now, this brush is a little frayed, so I might have to come in with a smaller brush, okay? I'm having a little problem with the frayed brush. So that's what happens. Brushes get a little old. I can just condition it at home, and it'll be ready to go next time. But I may just get away with it here, okay? So there we go. I have a little bit of that in there and I'm just rinsing it off. I want to smooth this out a little bit here. So just for the sake of time, oh, that's not working too good. My brush is a little too afraid. So I'm just going to go on to my red and I can fix that around with the red. Now, he has a darker and lighter and I love how that works like that. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start to tap. Now, this looks a little bright to me. So you know what? I think I'll take a little black and mix it in with that red. Now, I'm not sure, let me see what color this one is. This is um, Permanent Lizard and Crimson, uh, the Deco Art paint, like I said before. And I'm just darkening it, the Lizard and Crimson, with some black. There we go, because I want it a little darker here. And I'm just going to tap. The reason why I'm tapping is I want to get a little bit of a texture, like a little feathery, all right? Since the bird has a little feathers, I'm going right over the blue. If I see that blue peeking through, that's okay, because I can just go back and I'll put another layer on and cover it right up. So I'm doing some of this dark first, all right? And this is, like I said, lizard and crimson. All I did was dip in a little bit of the black, because I wanted a little blacker. You can even use the, the brown. See, I just used some brown there too and I'm just tapping it on. You can see I'm anchoring my finger, and like I said, this brush is a little bit frayed, but for a bird, that's fine. Here we go, coming up, trying to be careful in that little spot right there. Now, so now I think that's pretty good. We have a little of the black and the alizarin crimson on there. 
So I'm just rinsing my brush off, drying. I'm going to twist it, see if I can make it get a little straighter. And going into a lighter red, okay? Now, this light red is called um, naphthol red light, okay? And I'm going to come over and I'm going to straighten this out a little. And like I said, once it dries, I could do another, another coat on there. And I'm going to just tap, tap, tap this in. And I want to get some bright red up here before I start to mix it in with the darker color. We'll see if I can go around that black a little bit. And we'll paint in his beak and all too. Now, I'm going to tap in between these two colors. And that's how we're going to blend. Now, if your paint dried already, that's okay. You can redo it. You can do it again, wet it again, and start over. Or if you happen to get that blending medium, then the blending medium will work wonders and you wouldn't have to go over it again, all right? Because your paint would stay dry. But so far, it's pretty good here. Okay, so let me get further back. So you can see, I'm getting a little sloppy here. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's the lesson, I want you to see that lesson. And we got some nice red on his belly. And I just wanna go up and maybe fix up his little head here. There we go, okay? All right, so I'm in Indian yellow now, which is a nice bright color. And I'm going to be a little careful. I hope you can see that. And I'm just painting in the white spot right now. That's all I'm doing. So now he's got a nice, Nice bright beak on there, okay? If it's too bright, I can come in with a little brown and I can try to dull it down with a little brown. Maybe I can make a little line there in the middle because I saw Tom did that in there and, and it looked really nice. His beak could be a little more, a little more orange, uh, whichever you choose. I can come in with a little bit of white maybe and just dot a little tiny bit of an eye. Just a little. We don't want it to look like he has a big eyeball sticking out. So just thought it a little, little tiny bit, all right? So I have a little bit of a green here. And the green looks to me a little bit bluish. And that's okay. We're gonna give it a try. I'm going to dunk one side in the white and see if we can get a contrast, all right? Now, I'm not real happy with that green for this. So putting a little more blue in there just to see It'll darken it a little bit. And I'm going to show a few one-stroke leaves, all right? So now, with the one-stroke leaves, I can come here, I'm laying the brush flat, pushing, turning, and lifting. All right, here we go. Do another one till I run out of paint. I wanna show you how nice it would look if you just came in and put some nice bright flowers. So, my lesson for today was taking a painting that you may have done in oil, and change it to acrylic, or take a painting that you've already done, change the colors around, make a couple changes to it, and then you'll have a brand new beautiful painting. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope you'll take a peek at my other shows.